Libra. This is your monthly forecast for the month of April 2016. Thanks for joining me. Before we get to your monthly horoscope, I just wanted to quickly mention that I am available for readings on livevisions.com. That's where you can find me to receive a live reading from me. So the link is in the description box below. And also I do offer recorded readings. You can either contact me on livevisions.com for that, or you can shoot me an email, which is also in the description box. For the month of April, we're having a special on Live Vision. So if you would like a reading with myself, you can contact me and the first 10 minutes of your reading are free. So if you order a 15 minute reading, for example, you get a 25 minute reading for the price of 15. So it's pretty awesome. And it's only for the month of April, so take advantage of it. And I will be glad to do a reading for you guys. So let's get started with your horoscope. So the sun is in Aries for the first part of the month of April, okay? And this is in your seventh house. Seventh house of relationships. And you know the sun is like a big flashlight, right? He shines a big light to shed light on any area of your life where he's transiting. And for you, this is relationships. One-on-one -on -one partnerships. This is the house of Libra. So you could be feeling extra like yourself, you know, your diplomatic Libra self and very poised and proper and making sure you look nice and out there socializing and things like that. Um, going to social gatherings and networking with people, negotiating with people, it's a good time for that. But if you are looking for love, which a lot of Libras usually are because you guys are the sign of partnership, while the sun is in your seventh house is an excellent time because the sun is exuding this relationship energy out there for you you know you're walking around and you're shining in the world as far as if you're open to a relationship or not if you're not open to a relationship if you're not single um, it's still a great time for business negotiations or if you're already partnered it's a good time to highlight your relationship in regards to how things are going and discuss that with your partner it's really going to have you thinking a lot more about your relationship and wanting to discuss things about it and maybe, you know, make some things better, but also the sun can shine and show you where things are not going so well and things may come up that are not so favorable in your relationship, but you have a chance to work it out because the seventh house energy is the energy of you. You're very diplomatic. You like to negotiate, you know, so working things out in a partnership that's not going so great is also a good time to do that while the sun is in your seventh. However, on the ninth of the month, the sun is in conjunction with Uranus in your seventh house. Uranus is the planet of surprises, of the unexpected, of the out of the ordinary, the outside the box. So, if you are in a relationship, something unexpected can come up. Maybe you've been dating someone and you haven't really made an established official, you know, status with your relationship, but on the day that the sun is in conjunction with Uranus, maybe you or your partner finally decide, you know what? I want us to be official. Let's just let's just make it official. Let's just be a couple. Let's go steady, as they used to say back in the day. Um, or if you are single, maybe you can all of a sudden meet someone on that day that you decide, wow, this is my ultimate relationship partner, and I really want to be with this person. Or you can also have a relationship suddenly end. You know that is a possibility as well. But whatever it is, the sun conjunct Uranus is going to bring some sort of surprise and, and something out of the box. Don't be afraid of it, you know, just welcome change. Whatever changes happen in your life are usually to bring you to something way better or to the next level and progress. On the 20th of the month, the sun moves into Taurus and this is in your eighth house. So Libra, if you have been working on a relationship with someone, you guys are dating, you're getting to know each other, while the sun is in the eighth house, this is a great time to really intimately bond with them and become one entity okay and maybe start moving in with someone sharing property sharing finances that's the energy of the eighth house if you're not into relationships at this time then the eighth house energy is all about your income that is not earned by you working and standing on your own two feet to earn it okay it's like taxes inheritances insurance um, if you get money like benefits from anywhere from the government or the state or whatever that's the eighth house so if you have any issues that need to be addressed in those regards, then the sun in the eighth house is an excellent time to do that. Or some things just might be brought to the light and brought to the surface because the sun is shining a light in that eighth house for you. Venus, for the first five days of April, continues to be in the sign of Pisces, which is your sixth house. The sixth house is the house of health and your work environment, your work 
duties and also your daily routine. So, you know, continuing on that ener energy from March on into the first week of April, um, maybe getting some new beauty regimens going, um, maybe start working out more at the gym and paying attention to your health and your appearance based on how healthy you are. Venus in the sixth can also mean at work, maybe you're getting along a lot better with your coworkers or maybe you're being recognized in a more positive light and maybe people are more willing to work with you, you know, if you have any issues at work and you just maybe being seen around the work environment in a more favorable way. But once we get to the fifth, Venus moves into Aries and this is your seventh house. Libra, let's talk about this, honey, okay, because Libra, you guys are ruled by Venus, right? The seventh house is a similar energy to Libra because Libra is a seventh sign on the zodiac wheel. So this is all about love, relationships. This is an excellent time once Venus moves into your opposite sign to find love if you're looking for it. Even if you're not looking for it, Libra, Libras are usually pretty good looking people, okay? And when Venus is in your seventh house, it's like, this is how people are seeing you, okay? You're wearing Venus on you in, in regards to like relationships and being open to them. So even if you're not purposely putting it out there that you want a relationship, you're gonna be attracting people to you. Even if you don't wanna attract a relationship, people still may be like, you know, flocking to you. Like even like friends might start wanting to hang out with you or you might be wanting to go in more social events and people will be like, oh my gosh, who is this Libra right here? They are so super fly. I have to talk to them, male or female. You'll just be attracting people in general. So this is a very, very good energy. Like I said, if you're trying to work on getting a relationship, if you're already in a relationship, it's a really good time to soften things up. You know, like I said, the sun there is like a, a harsh like flashlight, shining a light on everything. So you see everything, the good and the bad. And Venus is like, I just want us all to be getting along. Can't we all just get along? You know, I just want everything to run smooth and for us just to be in love and enjoying each other's company. So Venus in the seventh house is a great time whether you're single or whether you are in a relationship or whether you're only interested in just networking and talking with people in general. Now, Venus will come in contact with the planet Uranus on the 23rd of April. Remember, Uranus is that planet of surprises, you know, the unexpected, the outside the box. So if you are looking for love, you can all of a sudden find it in an unexpected area or unexpected time, okay, in an unexpected person maybe, somebody that's a lot different from you that is not your usual type. That's what the energy of Uranus represents. Or a relationship can suddenly end or it can suddenly begin. Like, oh my gosh, they're just taking me on this whirlwind. Like, I just met them when Venus moved into Aries in the beginning of the month. Now it's the end of the month and they have swept me off my feet suddenly and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? I don't know, but I love it, right? When we get to the 30th of the month, Venus will move into Taurus. This is your eighth house. So intimate bonding with another person if you've been building with them while you've had seventh house energy going on. So the sun will still be there and then Venus moves into the eighth. So if you really want to bond with someone on a soul level, Venus in the eighth house is the time to do that. Mars has been in the sign of Sagittarius, which is your third house since the month of March. All right. And the third house is the house of communication. It's the house of short distance travel and skills of the hands. So with Mars there and affecting the way that your, your logical, rational mind is processing thoughts and the way that you're speaking them out there can be kind of aggressive with Mars there because Mars is a hot fireball planet. He just wants to fire things off. He, he's very passionate and aggressive. He's just like, I just want to get things done. I just want to get this said. I just want to accomplish this and I don't want anyone to get in my way. You know, I just want to think about what I want to think about, point my arrow there and stay on that one track mind to, you know, get things done. That's the energy of Mars. So you could have been a very much of a busybody since March. And also your communication, like I said, could have been a little more aggressive. Libras are normally very diplomatic people, maybe kind of soft spoken or maybe just the type of person that just likes to get along with people. So you try to keep a middle ground. But Mars in the third is kind of challenging for you with that. So just be mindful of that. Mars is going to go retrograde on the 17th of April. Mars is going to be bringing things back. 
Since it's your mind, Mars is going to be bringing things back in your memory. It can be bringing things back in your memory that are kind of not so favorable, okay? Because Mars is like the opposite energy of you, Libra. You, you're so Venusian. You just, you just want everything to go right in your life. And everybody just laugh and enjoy each other's company and enjoy some good art and food and music. But Mars can have you thinking about some really aggressive stuff. When he goes retrograde, he could be bringing back maybe some old memories of things that are not so pleasant. So I would just warn you of that. But also, Mars in the third is a great time to get things accomplished like tasks okay because Libra you're not really a sign generally speaking the energy of Libra is not an initiative and action oriented sign um, because you're the opposite of Aries which is very action and initiative oriented um, so you're not really like that you kind of like to wait and feel things out and see what other people are doing first and then maybe go along with it or like get the okay from another person or weigh things down in your mind first and then get the okay from yourself to initiate things but Mars in the third is initiation of action okay and, and thought putting action to your thoughts and actually doing them but the retrograde motion can kind of slow things down but it can also make um, the energy a little more potent too because Mars is like closer to the earth while he's retrograde so try not to use that energy for being too aggressive okay to where you are firing off of people and not being very rational about things but since you have seventh house energy going on at the same time, tap into that and you can be your diplomatic Libra self more easily. Saturn continues to go retrograde as well. Saturn has been retrograde in your third house in Sagittarius since the end of March. Saturn is an energy that's very stern. You know, he's like that stern old teacher that wants you to do things perfectly right. And if you don't do it right, he's going to make you do it over and over again and repeat it until you do. Now, in the third house, this is the mind, but it's also skills of the hands. If you've been trying to learn something, and it's also like lower education, right? Like not higher minded like college, but it's more like a lower grade, like you're just le learning a new skill or a new craft, right? So if you've been trying to learn something, Saturn has been like making you very, very staying on the tried and true path, okay? Doing things step by step by step and getting them right. If you haven't been doing that, when Saturn goes retrograde, it's like he's giving you an exam. He's going to be asking you, Libra, have you been learning these skills the right way? Have you been, like, diligent? Have you been consistent? Because Saturn loves consistency. And if you haven't been consistent, he's going to enforce that upon you. So if you're in a situation where you've been trying to learn something, anything, skills for a job, um, you're in school in some kind of way or learning a new trade, Saturn is going to be asking you, to go back and make sure you've been doing things the right way. So just keep that in mind and keep staying on that tried and true path. Even though the retrograde motion can kind of slow things down and make it a little more difficult to process. So Mercury is in the sign of Aries for the first five days and this is in your seventh house. And he starts out in conjunction with Uranus, like right from the bat, right from the first day of April. All right, so what this means is Uranus is a, is a kind of an oddball energy. So your thought process and your thinking and your speaking when it comes to relationships with other people, you can be kind of coming off in like this way that they might they might say like, Libra, what are you talking about? I don't understand you. Like you're saying some weird stuff. What's going on? So just be mindful of that. But it's also a very innovative and creative energy. So if you're in any type of field where you have to come up with some fresh, new, exciting, crazy ideas, Mercury conjunct Uranus in the seventh house is a great time to come up with them. Just be careful with talking kind of weird or crazy when it comes to your relationships or all of a sudden coming up with some crazy ideas to do things with your partner. It actually might be a good thing, but Mercury is going to move into Taurus in your eighth house after the 5th of April. So you're going to be really talking and thinking about this intimate bonding with another person joining together when it comes to finances maybe or moving in together you know sharing property together that's what's going to be on your mind during the month of april on the 14th of april though mercury is going to go into its shadow period okay that's when it starts slowing down and preparing to go retrograde then on the 28th mercury goes retrograde like really starts moving backwards in your eighth house so this is what i've seen happen okay i've seen people that have old lovers come back to them either in memory 
or through communication, like electronic communication, social media, or they really actually pop up in their lives again, talking about, do you want to rekindle this old thing we had? Do you remember the times? Do you remember the time? You know, they're going to be like asking you those questions. Do you remember what we used to have, Libra? Do you want to go back to that? And you're going to be like, oh man, I don't know. I'm not sure, you know. Mercury retrograde can bring that back in your life. I'm just giving you a fair warning. If this is not for you. Make sure you block those exes from your social media. Block them from your phone. Don't answer their emails. Block them from texting you. Anything you can do to not allow them to try to creep back in your life, Libra. But Mercury retrograde is a great time to reminisce with a partner that you are committed to about the good times and the bad times and maybe go back over some things to create more intimacy within your relationship what have we not been doing to maximize our bonding together you know so that's what can be talked about with mercury going retrograde in your eighth house another planet that's going to be moving retrograde is pluto and pluto is in capricorn he's going to start going backwards at 17 degrees capricorn and this is in your fourth house fourth house is home and family the Pluto is transformation, okay? And he, he, when he goes retrograde, he might bring some old crap back up again for you to look at and see and be like, you know what? What are you going to do about this, Libra? Are you going to finally flush this out of your life or what? So this can be maybe an old issue with family, you know, um, that comes back up again. Maybe it can actually be your house. I would say take very good care of your house. Make sure everything's in working order, especially with Mercury going into retrograde. And Pluto has to do with plumbing okay the pipes the depths you know below the surface so watch the plumbing in your house i know it sounds weird watch the plumbing in your house when pluto goes retrograde you might have some things that come up some problems that may need to be fixed but also like i said this has to do with family so some old family wounds because pluto does rule old wounds that have not healed or that need to be healed in regards to family may come up if they do you know, talk it out with them or talk it out with a therapist, a counselor, a trusted loved one, whoever. Um, but just don't let this time get to you too badly, you know, but um, it's a chance to really bring up some old things to finally get that wound sealed up and healed. So just keep that in mind, Libra. So let's talk about the moons really quick. The moons are happening um, every month. There's a new moon and a full moon. This month in April, the new moon is in Aries and it's at 17 degrees and this is in your seventh house. This is on April 7th, all right? So it's in conjunction with Uranus. Something new and unexpected with relationships. That's all I'm going to say about that. Whatever that means for you is what it means, okay? A new beginning, a uh, relationship ending, um, and all of a sudden somebody new steps into your life and you're like, dang like where did you come from all of a sudden you know where have you been on my life so that those things can definitely happen with the new moon but also if you're not into relationships maybe a new business partnership can come up or if you're already established maybe a brand new beginning to do some new exciting things with your partner can happen with the new moon the full moon is at two degrees scorpio in your second house and this is on april 22nd second house is earn income now, you've got a lot of 8th house energy happening, which is joint finances and, and finances that you don't earn from your earned income. Now you have this full moon bringing things to a final decision when it comes to how you earn your money. Okay, so finances are highlighted big time this month. Maybe you start a new job. That can very well be with a full moon. Maybe a job ends um, so you can begin a new one that's more true to you. Maybe you find a new way that's creative to make your own money and earn money besides your regular job. So a final decision, maybe you finally decide to actually take a job. You've been deciding between a couple of them and you're like, you know what, that's the one, okay? Or a job decides to hire you and you hear back from them. So those are very much possibilities with the full moon on the 22nd. All right, Libra, so to wrap up the month of April for you, um, we have your most highlighted areas of life being your seventh house of relationships and partnerships and your eighth house of intimately bonding with someone and joining with another person on a financial venture or in a relationship in regards to sharing property and finances. Those are huge for you this month. Sudden changes can happen because of the Uranus energy coming in contact with 
all these personal planets in your seventh. So just be aware of that. Also, your second house is highlighted a little bit at the end of the month because of the full moon. So a final decision made when it comes to earned income or some type of way that you earn your money or a job, okay? Also, the third house is highlighted because of Saturn and Mars being there. Might make things a little bit tough for you when it comes to learning some new skills or communicating. But remember, they're there to help you out to progress further in life, all right? And also the sixth house is highlighted a little bit at the beginning of the month because Venus is there for the first five days, helping you to continue on with taking care of your body and also with being a superstar at work and people actually liking you at work and people actually liking you and having a more pleasant view of you in the workplace. All right, well, I hope that was helpful and insightful for you, Libra. And please remember to subscribe and share and also that I give readings as I mentioned at the beginning. Everything's in the description box for you if you would like a personalized reading. I do personalized horoscopes as well because not everybody's, not every Libra is going to have the same exact horoscope and same exact things happening for them every month. Everybody's unique so I'll be glad to help you if you would like some more insight. All right. Well, I will see you guys next month in the month of May. Take care of yourselves. Mwah, love ya. Peace.